Welcome to lecture 4.2, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. This is the second and final lecture um, that is just about matrix theory. That is before we get to, um, before we return to differential equations. And I think it's probably the most important too. Um, to summarize where this fits into the big picture, we will get a system of differential equations, turn it into matrix form, and then we will compute these so-called eigenvalues and eigenvectors and those, those things actually determine almost everything that we need to know about this system. Okay, so here's a definition. Suppose A is a square matrix. Um, so it's going to be 2 by 2 for everything we do, but this works for a general M by N matrix. In that case, a vector V is an eigenvector of A if this holds. If A times V is some lambda times V for some constant lambda, which is called an eigenvalue. So eigenvalues and eigenvectors come in pairs. So um, here's, let me give you a geometric explanation of this. Remember at the end of last lecture, I gave you a geometric way to view matrices. So if here's a vector V, then A times V might be up here, it might be down there, it might be short, it might be long, but it's an eigenvector if it gets sent to some scalar multiple of V. In other words, if it, if it remains on this line. Sends a vector on this line to something else on this line. So in this case, this is this picture AV looks like it's about two times V. So it is, is it, and two is the, is the scaling factor, which could be positive, or it could be greater than one, it could be less than one, which is I guess a shrinking factor. It could be negative, which would send this vector out over here. Um, and the last thing I want to say is notice that if this vector gets stretched by a factor of 2, so does this vector, so does that vector, so does this entire line get stretched by a factor of 2. So when we're searching for eigenvectors, we don't need to um, write down everything on this line. We just need to find, if we find one, that anything on this line is an eigenvector, then we know the entire line is. So you might ask, you know, how do we find these eigenvectors? So let's go back to the algebra. Let's ask, you know, how, let's ask how to find how to find these things. So what we need to solve, a times v equals lambda times v, and we need to solve this for v, but also for lambda. So we need to figure out both of these. And it's not clear which one to do first. So let's just follow, our, so let's just play around with this and see what happens. So I'm going to move everything onto one side of the equation, a v minus lambda v equals the zero vector. And now I'm going to factor out a v, but I have to be careful because what I cannot do is I can't just say a minus lambda times, you know, you want to do this, but that is a matrix and that's a vector. So you, you can't do that. Now that doesn't make, or not a vector, it's a scalar. You can't take a two by two matrix and subtract like a number from it. That does not make sense at all. So let's get some intuition as to what this looks like. So this is like, oh, you know, I'm not going to say A11. I'm, I'm going to call it ABCD. That's easier. So, so let's take this two by two matrix and let's, um, actually, let me erase that as well. Say this is times V1, V2. No, I'm going to call it X1 and X2 throughout. Minus lambda times. So we want to figure out how to simplify this. So the trick here is to take A, B, C, D times X1, X2 minus lambda. Now I'm going to put an identity matrix in here times x1, x2. So I haven't, I've just multiplied by 1, but now I can factor out this x1, x2, because I can certainly say this matrix minus a scalar times that. In other words, I'm going to write this as a minus lambda i times v equals 0. So this is what we want to solve. And this is, in fact, to be clear, the 0 vector. Okay, so this is a homogeneous equation. Remember that from the very last slide of the last lecture? This right-hand side is zero. And 
it seemed a little silly to me. You know, the last slide of that last lecture, I wrote some things down that seemed like they're trivial, but this is where they're important. This, a homogeneous equation, has a unique solution if and only if the determinant of this is zero. Now, we don't want a unique solution. We know zero is a solution, right? V, v equals zero is always going to make this work. We're looking for a non-zero solution. So we are looking for some non-zero vector such that this times v equals zero. And by the very last slide of the last lecture, that is only going to happen if the determinant of this thing is non-zero. So let me, so let me say this, this is homogeneous. So this, this has a non-zero solution if and only if the determinant of a minus lambda i is zero. So that is the key here. So to find these eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we have to compute the determinant of this and set it equal to zero. Okay, so let's, let's do that. So, um, a minus, let's write it like, so first, yeah, let's do this first. a minus lambda i equals, I'm going to go back to my a11. Um, yeah, should I? Now, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with a, b, c, d. a, b, c, d, there we go. So minus lambda i is just scalar times the identity matrix. So that, that's this matrix. And so this, it looks like this. A minus lambda, B, C, and D minus lambda. So the determinant, so the determinant of A minus lambda i, remember how, what that is? That's this product minus that product. So that, that is a minus lambda times d minus lambda um, minus, that should be a lambda, b times c. And we have to set that equal to 0. So what we have now is we have a, this is a polynomial that's right. So this is a this is a degree two polynomial in lambda. If you multiply this out, you get a lambda squared. In particular, this let's write out what this polynomial is. This is lambda squared plus then what then we have a plus d lambda, right? And then plus, what's our constant term? A, D minus, oh, I said plus and I wrote plus, A, D minus B, C equals zero. And this thing I'm going to box and I'm going to call this the characteristic, this is the characteristic polynomial, characteristic polynomial. Correct. Caract, I'm missing a, a letter, Caract. I think there should be a T in there. Care, there we go. Characteristic, characteristic polynomial. And notice what these terms, notice what these terms are. This is the determinant of the matrix. And this is... That's the the sum of the of the di or, sorry the sum of the entries on the main diagonal. Let's give a name to this. So the trace of a matrix is the sum of the entries along the main diagonal, and we denote it as TR of A. So in other words, if A is two by two, then the trace is just the sum of these entries. It's this thing right here. So here are some useful facts. First of all, for any square matrix. The trace is equal to the sum of the eigenvalues. Let me emphasize that that does not mean that these are the eigenvalues. In general, they usually are not, but the sum of the eigenvalues 
always is the sum of the entries in the main diagonal. And the proof of that is beyond the scope of the class. It's not too hard. You might see it in an advanced linear algebra class. I certainly do it when I teach my first year uh, graduate course on linear algebra. So the second fact is that the characteristic polynomial, this is something that we noticed in the previous slide, of any 2 by 2 matrix always has, well, by definition, it is, we write it like this, and it's the determinant of a minus lambda i, and it is lambda squared minus the trace of a times lambda plus the determinant. So th this is kind of a shortcut for computing the characteristic polynomial. This thing you're welcome to memorize and use. Um, in fact, I do this. Um, I don't think it's any harm, and it's a good way to check your work as well. So let, let me just remind you that, the, that an alternative definition of the eigenvalues are as the, as the roots of the characteristic polynomial. So let, let me just say that. The, the roots of P of lambda are the eigenvalues. Oh, let me erase. Sometimes I write E values. So I'll, I'll write the whole thing out. Eigen values um, of A. And eigen, I don't think I mentioned this, eigen in German means self. So an eigenvalue, which is when a v equals lambda v, that means a vector is mapped to itself or mapped to a scalar of itself. Okay, so let's do some examples. Okay, so to do this, let's, we want to know when the determinant of a minus lambda i is zero. So that that is, so remember we write the determinant with vertical lines, so that's 1 minus lambda, 1, 4, 1, this determinant, oh, so, I'm sorry, I, I forgot, that's 1 minus lambda equals 0. So this is 1 minus lambda squared minus 4, again, that, that product minus that product, that's the determinant. So this is lambda squared minus, um, what is that, minus 2 lambda, then minus one, plus 1 minus 4, so minus 3, is that correct? Yeah, minus 3 equals 0. So let's factor that, that's lambda minus th 3 times lambda plus 1 equals 0. In other words, we write this usually as lambda 1 equals 3 and lambda 2 equals negative 1. So it's, it's standard to write eigenvalues and eigenvectors as like lambda 1, lambda 2, or eigenvalues as like lambda 1, lambda 2. Okay, so now that we find the eigenvalues, let's find the eigenvectors. How do we do that? With an eigenvector, well, first of all, we got we got to do it for each one of these things separately. So let's so let's find the eigen eigenvectors. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick lambda one first. So lambda one equals three. So in this case, we have to we have to solve a minus lambda i times v equals 0, and we know what lambda is, so really that means we have to solve a minus 3i times v equals 0. In other words, solve for v. So let's write this out. a minus 3i, so is that's this matrix when we plug lambda in for 3. So a minus 3i is is the matrix, so it's 1 minus 3 is negative 2, so again I'm plugging in 3 for, for this and for that, so it's negative 2, 1, 4, um, negative 2, times v, let's call that vector x1, x2, and we have to set that equal to 0. So let me say over here, solve, solve for, 
Sorry about my handwriting. Ah, let's try that again. Solve for. I swear this this stylish this pen gets into moods at certain times, and then it jumps right out of it. Okay, so we have to. This is something that you could have done in middle school or high school. It's a two by two system of equations. Let's write it out. This is negative two x one plus x two equals zero. And the second one is 4x1 minus 2x2 equals 0. You may ask, well, why didn't we just multiply by the inverse? We can't do that. Remember that this matrix, the determinant is 0. It doesn't have an inverse. And you'll see a pattern that when we do this, look what we get. We get two equations that are the same up to scalar multiples. The, this is just a scalar of this. And that should always happen for a 2 by 2 system. If it doesn't happen... Stop, check your work, you've made a mistake. So since I'm going to cross out this equation because it's the same thing as this one. And so what is this? So this is our, that's our solution. Okay, so what do I mean that's our solution? Well, I mean that this tells us that x2 is 2 times x1. So what does that mean? That means the so we're looking for a vector v, which is x1, x2, and we have just determined that the x2 entry is twice as big as the x1 entry. So let me actually write that down. x, x2 is twice as big as x1. So in other words, so x1, x2 is whatever the heck x1 is, let's just call it c because we don't know, x2 is 2 times c. So if you want, you can, you can pull out the c and write this as 1, 2. So remember that if we have an eigenvector, every scalar is an eigenvector. So all we need to really, you know, so we, we can ignore this c. All we, all we care about is, is this vector, 1, 2. And sure, you know, some people might have gotten 1 half and 1, and that's perfectly fine too. So any of these is an eigenvector. So let's just pick one, and let's, let's use 1, 2. So I'm going to say up here that v1 is 1, 2. That's an eigenvector associated with this eigenvalue. And of course, I could have picked 2, 4, or 1, half, 1, or something like that. I could not have picked 0, 0. Although that's technically correct, what we want is we want an actual non-zero vector. Okay, so let's, um, actually, before we go on, let's, let's check. Is it indeed the case that this matrix times this vector, 1, 2, is indeed 3 times that vector? Let's, let's check. So 1, 1, 4, 1 times this vector, 1, 2. So what is this? This is 3 times 4 plus 6, and yes, that vector is 3 times this, which is indeed 3 times 1, 2. So this is saying A times V equals 3 times B. Okay, let's find the next, let's find the other eigen vector. So let's say where lambda 2 is equal to negative 1, let's find the associated eigenvector for that. So this eigenvector solves a minus lambda i times v equals 0, where lambda is negative 1. In other words, we need to solve, um, well, so let's, let's say that v2 solves a plus lambda, or not plus lambda, ah, Try that again. V2 solves A plus I times V equals 0. So A minus negative 1I is just A plus I times V equals 0. So let's, let's write that out. So A plus I is, so that's 
A, or a plus i is this matrix plus 1, 1. So that's going to make it 2, 1, 4, 2 times x1, x2 equals 0. So that gives us the system 2x1 plus x2 equals 0 and 4x1 plus 2x2 equals 0. So this is a system of two equations and two unknowns. And as before, and as it should be, this equation is just a scalar multiple of that one. So we can ignore it, and we can focus only on this one. Again, if it wasn't, then we knew we made a mistake. So this, this here tells us that x2 equals negative 2x1. Uh, let's... Somehow I missed a stroke, x1. So in other words, x1, x2 equals... So now it's tempting to, to just copy these coefficients and write, oh, negative 2, 1. That's incorrect. So x2 is negative 2 times x1, meaning whatever the heck x1 was, x2 is negative 2 times that. So I can pull out the negative 2... No, sorry, the negative 2, I can pull out the c... I could pull out the negative 2, but that would, that would be pointless. So let's, let's pull out the C, 1, negative 2. So, again, any scalar multiple of this is an eigenvector, so let's just pick one. Let's pick 1, negative 2, and I'm going to so V2 equals 1 and negative 2. So now we have found, so we have done our job. Um, in summary, the matri this matrix A has eigenvalues lambda 3 and lambda negative 1 with associated eigenvectors 1, 2, and 1, negative 2. Okay, so example 2, spoiler alert, the eigenvalues are going to be complex numbers. So let's, let's find them. So the determinant of a minus lambda i, so that's this determinant, negative 1 half minus lambda. I'm just going to write it out. So it, it is this product minus that product. So it's so negative 1 half minus lambda squared. That's, that's the same thing as positive 1 half plus lambda squared, right? I don't like negative numbers because, again, the negative sign would pull out and then we square it minus, or minus negative 1, which is plus 1. So this is lambda squared plus lambda plus 5 fourths. And if you write it equals 0, and if you, I did this ahead of time, but if you, if you do the quadratic equation, you get that lambda 1, lambda 2 are negative 1 half plus or minus i. That's the negative b plus or minus, you know, that quadratic equation. Okay, so let's, so these are the two eigenvalues. Let's find the eigenvectors. So the first, uh, find the first eigenvector. Let's, lambda 1 equals negative 1 half plus i. So the first eigenvector satisfies, so a minus lambda, lambda is negative one-half plus i times capital I times v equals, and I'm going to not put hats over my v because I, um, I think it's clear from the context that this is a vector, and also in this lecture, in this slide, I'm going to put some complex conjugates over things, and that looks like a hat. Um, okay, so this this thing equals zero. You know, what? let's let's not say equals zero. Let's let's rather it is equal to zero, but let's actually write out what this is. So we're plugging in this guy into lambda there and lambda there. The negative one halves will cancel, and we will get. Do we get? We get negative i. We get one, negative one, and negative i times x1, x2 
equals zero. So this, this is a system. This is negative i times x1 plus x2 equals zero. And the other one is negative x1 minus i x2 equals zero. So remember I said that, one of, that these things are always scalar multiples of each other. Notice that this equation is actually a scalar multiple of that equation. This times negative i gives you that. And um, sometimes it's actually completely non-obvious that one of these is a scalar multiple of this one. If I were to have like 1 plus i up here instead of just negative i, it would probably not at all be visually obvious that, that one is a scalar of the other. So because of that, we can actually pick one of these things, either one of them, and find our, pick our eigenvector. So let me, let me pick this one. And, and if I pick that, then I get, um, I get that x2 equals i times x1, which means that x1, x2, our eigenvector, so this means, remember that whatever the heck x1 is, x2 is i times that. So it's i times c. So we can pull out the c and we can get 1 or we can get i. This is, so in other words, we can get that um, v1 equals 1 times i. Let me make that a little better v1 equals 1 times i. Can you tell that's an i? I, I think so. Okay, so now let me say something else. Now, half of you, if, it, if, if I had a whole class doing this, half of them would have probably picked this equation instead. And if those of you who would have picked that equation, you would have said, okay, um, x1, here you would have said x1, equals negative i times x2, right? And if, so this is x1, and if I move this over the other side, I get x1 equals negative i x2. In that case, you would say x1, x2. So whatever the heck x2 is, x1 is negative i times that. Oh, sorry, it's times c. So we get c times negative i and 1. And you look at this and you say, well, hold on, that, that's a different eigenvector than that is, right? Not so fast. If you, multi if you take this thing and you multiply it by i, you do indeed get that thing. So either, either one of these is a valid response. And even though you, you, know, you can see now this is a, multiply this by i, you get that. Sometimes, um, if this vector were like i plus 1 and negative 6, this thing might look something completely different, where it's not at all obvious that these things are scalar multiples. So that, that certainly makes it harder to grade on my end. Um, but anyways, so let's find the second eigenvector. So lambda 2 equals negative 1 half minus i. And and at this point, I'm going to do a short little trick. So I could do the same thing, and I encourage you for practice you know, to pause it and do, and do the same process. But here's, here's a shortcut Work for complex eigenvectors. Um, I want you to note something. So note that if, how do I want to say this? If a times v equals lambda times v, so this is a vector, and this is a vector. So let's take the complex conjugate of both of these things. So just, you know, the complex conjugate is, remember that a plus bi bar is a plus, or is a minus bi. And with, co with complex numbers, z, if I have z1 times z2 bar, Everything you want to be true is true. So that's z1 bar times z2 bar. And similarly, if there were a plus in here, I could break up the plus. So anyways, this thing here means that this a bar 
v bar, and this is why I'm not using vector hats in this slide, because this is conjugate, not bar, equals lambda bar times v bar. Now if a is a, uh, this I mean, take the complex conjugate of every single entry in a, if a is real valued, then a bar is equal to a, right? Because it only actually changes things when, when you have complex numbers or imaginary parts. So this thing is equal to a. So if a is real valued, that means that a times v bar equals lambda bar times v bar. So what does that mean? That means if we have an eigenvalue like this, an eigenvector like that, then automatically we have a second then we automatically have an eigenvector for the second eigenvalue, namely the complex conjugate of this. So what this means is, is this means that IE V2, my second eigenvector, is V1 bar, which is, well, let's, I guess I used 1i, so let's, let's use that, so that's, 1i bar, which is 1, and so the complex conjugate of each of these numbers, 1, that, that's real, so that's not affected, but the complex conjugate of i is negative i. So that's negative i. So there's my v2. So without actually doing the math, I can say right away that v2 is 1 negative i, and that always works. If, if you have complex numbers, once you find the first eigenvector, well, once you have the first eigenvalue, you, these things come in conjugate pairs. And similarly, once you find the first eigenvector, you have the second one. Just make all the, just switch all the signs on the i's. So the third example, we're going to split it into two parts. Uh, both of them involve the case when the characteristic polynomial has a repeated root. And the question you may be wondering is, if you have one root with multiplicity 2, does that mean that there's one eigenvector or two? And the answer is, either one is possible. So this first one, let's find the, uh, let's find the eigenvalues. The determinant of a minus lambda i. So this is this determinant, 3 minus lambda. So it's 1 minus lambda times 3 minus lambda times 3 minus lambda minus negative 1, which is plus 1. So that is lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 4. And this is lambda minus 2 squared. So now we have one eigenvalue. So let's, let's write up. Lambda 1 equals 2. And let's see how many eigenvectors we get. So let's solve for the eigenvectors. So let's, uh, so let's, ooh, let's get my pen. Let's solve. Um, A minus 2i times v equals 0. So A minus 2i that is um, negative 1 goes here, and 1 goes here, and then the other entries are unchanged, times x1, x2 equals 0, 0. That means negative x of this system, x2 equals 0, and x1 plus x2 equals 0. So obviously, these are the same equations up to scalar, so let's just get rid of one of them. And we write this as you know, x1 equals negative x2. So that just means x1 and x2 are, are negative sign. So our eigenvector, one of these is 1, one of these is negative 1. So let's say, so v1 is 1, negative 1. So here is our eigenvalue eigenvector pair, and that's all we get. So our last example is let's find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. 
So this is actually 2 times the identity. So notice that the determinant of a minus lambda i is 2 minus lambda is this. So this is 2 minus lambda squared equals 0. And so we have lambda 1 and lambda 2 are both equal to 2. So as before, we get an eigenvalue of multiplicity 2. The difference is when we try to find the eigenvectors. So a minus lambda i times v, this is what we have to solve. So a minus lambda i is now 2 minus 2, 0, 0, 2 minus 2. So it is actually the 0 matrix, 0, 0, 0, 0, times x1, x2 equals 0, 0. What does this mean? This means that 0x1 plus 0x2 equals 0, and that holds for any x1 and x2. We actually have two of these. So really, any vector is an eigen... So x1 and uh, x... Let's try that again. So x1 and x2 can be any thing. So any vector is an eigenvector. Um, this is quite an unusual case. Um, there are more complicated examples for 3 by 3, 4 by 4, and for larger matrices. For 2 by 2 matrices, the only time this ever happens when you have two eigen, more than one eigenvector is when you have a scalar times the identity, which is not, and again, that does not necessarily hold for larger matrices, but it does for here. Um, so first of all, why is any... Let's check this. Why is any vector an eigenvector? Well, of course, notice that um, our matrix times any vector, x1, x2, is just 2, 2x1 two times 2x2, two which is 2 times x1, x2. This matrix just scales your vector times a factor by 2. So what this looks like, let's go back to our, our geometric picture, is that if, well, this, if this is v, then a times v, this is a v equals 2v. If this is v, then, then that's a times, that's w. This is a w equals lambda w. This vector gets sent to here. This vector gets sent to here. Everything gets scaled by a factor of 2. So frequently, what we don't actually need infinitely many eigenvectors. Typically, we need two eigenvectors. And, and you'll see shortly why this is. So it's customary to, to write lambda 1 equals 2, lambda 2 equals 2. And then let's just, let's just pick two eigenvectors. Let's pick the simplest ones we can. So we'll say v1 equals 1, 0, and v2 equals 0. And really, we could have picked any two, number, any two vectors that are not scalars of, it, scalars of each other. And that, again, though every vector is an eigenvector, um, it's customary to write down our eigenvalues and just pick an eigenvector for each one. And you'll see why we want to do this when we look at differential equations in the next, in the next couple of lectures.